Section 5. Understanding app stops and stops in exposure. In photography, a stop is the measurement of exposure depending on the shutter speed, ISO or aperture. Increasing the exposure by one stop doubles the exposure. So for example, your aperture is f4, shutter speed is 1 by 100 and ISO is 100. Then if you keep the aperture at f4, the shutter speed at 1 by 100, but if you increase the ISO to 200, you have increased the exposure by one stop. Doubling the ISO makes the exposure twice as sensitive, hence the jumps in single stops. It can get a little bit confusing, but it's really important that you know this, here's why. As your skills as a photographer improve and you start to shoot in manual more often, you're in charge of looking after how the camera exposes. Knowing what stop is for the shutter speed, ISO and most importantly, aperture will affect how you change each one. Let me make this simple for you. You are shooting at f2.8 at 1 by 100 of a second with an ISO of 200 but you want a shallower depth of field. You know that widening your aperture to f2 will produce a shallower depth of field but it will also double the amount of light that's entering your lens. You have jumped one stop with your aperture and made the exposure too bright. So you have to contract with the shutter speed or ISO. To do this, you can have the ISO 200 or double the shutter speed to 1 by 200 of a second. To briefly summarize, increasing the exposure by a stop will double the exposure and decreasing the exposure by a stop will have it. ISO stops. Let's start with the easiest to understand which is ISO. One stop off from ISO 100 is 200, but one stop off from that is 400. The intervals aren't equal, but they all have one thing in common. They are double from one step before. It's very easy to understand. Shutter speed stops. The majority of the time when using your camera, you'll be shooting at a fraction of a second. If you shoot at a speed of one second or longer, the same principles as above apply. If you are new to photography, don't worry, this will soon become second nature. 1 by 100 is twice as long as 1 by 200, so that's one stop, and the exposure is doubled. 1 by 50 is twice as long as 1 by 100, and so on. Aperture. I'm afraid this is where things get a little bit complicated and somewhat mathematical. If you use the logic that I have explained above, then you would probably assume that f2 is half the exposure of f4. But sadly, this is not so. You may be scratching your head at this, but it will become clear if you can just stick with it. The aperture scale does not take on the same principles as shutter speed or ISO because of how the measurement is taken. If you have watched the previous video of mine about our aperture, you should be familiar with how this works, but for everyone else, stick with it. Aperture is measured using something called the f-stop scale. On your camera, you will see f or just f followed by a number the number denotes how wide the aperture is, which in turn affects the exposure and depth of field. The lower the number, the wider the aperture. This may seem confusing. Why a low number for high aperture? But first, you need to know the f-stop scale. The scale is as follows. Before we go any further, let's recap on what the aperture is. The aperture is the hole in the lens which the light passes through and it controls the both the exposure and the depth of field. We are only looking at the exposure here though. If you are changing from f2 to f2.8, then you are having the exposure. But to do so, you are having the area of an open aperture in the lens. The most important fact to know about these numbers is that from each number to the next, the aperture decreases to half its size and allows 50% less light through the lens. This is because the number comes from the equation used to work out the size of the aperture from the focal length. The app stands for focal length and the number represents the fraction of this which gives you the size of the aperture. For example, you have a 50mm lens with the aperture of f2. To find the width of the aperture, you divide the 50 by 2, giving you a diameter of 25mm. You then have to take the radius times its bicep to create the radius squared and times that by pi. The whole equation looks like this. Here are a couple of examples. Okay, so that stops for you. With all this new information, you should have a much better understanding of how to control your exposure. 